I'm Marie from DIY Montreal, and today I'm going to show you how to build these wooden epoxy hexagon posters. Now, if you're not ready to jump on the epoxy bandwagon just yet, I get it. That's why I'll also show you how to build these all wood versions of these coasters too. So, want to see how I built them? Let's get to it. Coasters are always a fun project because I can typically just rummage through my lumber cart and find whatever hardwood scraps I have on hand. Even some leftover floorboards from my recent kitchen renovation. These offcuts are in pretty good shape, but I need to plane down the backside of the floorboards in order to get rid of the grooves. So I'm just going to run them through the planer a few times and get them flat on both sides. I did this for all my wood scraps, not concerned with the final thickness at this point. I also removed the tongue and grooves from the floorboards. Okay, so I have some walnut, some cedar planks, a couple of strips of cherry, and my birch floors all milled up and ready to go. I reached into my lumber cart again and grabbed some melamine boards that I'll use to make the epoxy molds. I'm going to make three molds that are 18 by 4 inches. After cutting all the pieces, here I'm covering each one with sheathing tape so the epoxy won't stick to the forms. I used some clamps to hold the mold together while I assembled it with screws, making sure to keep all the seams as tight as possible. Next I applied silicone to all the inside seams to make sure none of the epoxy would seep out. I really hate applying silicone, it always makes a big mess, but you can always clean it up once it's dried. Okay, so I'm going to try a few different looks for the coasters, the first being walnut and white epoxy. My wood is just over half an inch thick at this point, aiming for a final coaster thickness of around three-eighths of an inch when all is said and done. I snuck up on the cut to get an exact fit for the mold, wanting to avoid leaving any gaps that the epoxy might get into. Before you mix up any resin, it's important to make sure your mold is level so you don't end up with a thick side and a thin side. I used a few shims to level out the form, and I also made sure to clamp down the wood so it wouldn't end up floating in the epoxy. I'm trying out Chill Clear Epoxy, which is designed for half inch thick pores. It has a 2 to 1 ratio, so I'll measure out 2 parts A and 1 part B, making sure to scrape down the sides of the cup each time. After stirring the epoxy mix for about 5 minutes, I added some white Russian metallic pigment and mixed it some more. I wanted the white to be really rich and almost opaque, so I ended up adding a few more scoops of pigment until I was happy with it. Once it's well mixed, all that's left is to enjoy the pour. Now if you've ever seen someone work with epoxy, you've probably noticed that they'll use a blowtorch or a heat gun to pop the air bubbles on the surface. The instructions for this brand say that's not necessarily and actually say to avoid this, so I'm just going to let the air bubbles pop naturally as they recommend. My second coaster set is going to be made up of birch hardwood floors with a bright blue epoxy strip off center. Once again I'm measuring out two parts A and one part B and mixing it up. If you're interested, you'll find more details on Chill Epoxy and where to buy it in the video's description below. This one's called Spring Break Regrets. Before pouring, I made sure my mold was perfectly level and clamped down my wood strips to hold them down in place. Boy do I love this color and how it pops with the white wood. Okay, so if you're not a fan of epoxy, the next one's for you. This one's going to be all wood. I'm setting my table saw fence to half an inch and I'll leave it there as I cut all the strips from the various wood species I want to use since the idea is to glue up a blank that'll be half an inch thick. Once all my strips are cut and laid out, I see a strip of walnut that's a little wider than I'd like so I'm going to rip that down into thinner strips as well. This is where my gripper with the thin 1 of an inch leg really comes in handy. Next it's time for glue up. I've laid out my clamps and set a call on each end. Yes, I could have pre-cut all my pieces to the same length, but I just skipped right to the glue up. I flipped all of the pieces onto their sides and added enough glue to fully cover each strip with the help of a glue brush. I applied just enough clamping pressure to get a little squeeze out, but not too much as to force the thin strips out of alignment. Go gentle here. I added a couple more clamps and let it dry overnight. After it dried, I could trim off the excess using my mini table saw sled, and it was at this point where I realized that I made a mistake. Let me explain. So when I first decided how long I would make my blanks for the four hexagon coasters, I measured like this. 
I needed 16 inches, so I went with 18 inches just to be safe. However, I realized that I laid them out wrong. I should have actually measured them like this, which means I won't have enough to make four coasters. Are sets of three a thing? Nevertheless, I kept moving forward with the project. With all my blanks dried, it's time to run them through the planer to flatten them on both sides and bring them down to their final thickness around 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. I ran the board through one side at a time, slowly lowering the cutter head as I went until the board was smooth and flat on both sides. We're almost ready to cut the hexagons, but first I want to trim my blank so the width is close to the width of this template I made. You don't have to do this, but if your blank is wider than it needs to be, your four coasters won't be perfectly identical. As a maker, not all of my projects turn out looking as good as I had pictured in my head, and the next attempt is one of those. I wanted to make a set that was 100% epoxy using a mix of Dirty Dog and Gold Digger. I poured a few layers until I had enough in the mold, about half an inch. I wanted to create a swirl effect, so I stirred the mix, but after about 15 minutes when I came back, it would look like a big blob, so I'd swirl again. It seems that that was a mistake, and it turned into something inspired by Van Gogh. Not what I was going for. Apparently you should wait until the epoxy starts to thicken like honey, and only then should you swirl. Lesson learned. Back to the walnut and white epoxy mold that has now dried for two days and it's ready to come out of the mold. I was afraid I might have issues demolding it, but the sheathing tip worked really well. The bottom was a little harder to get off, but after getting the tip of a putty knife in, it was easy to wedge open and pry off. As you can see, the epoxy is lower than the wood, and there's some that seeped underneath, so I'm going to clean that all up on my planer. I figured it would be easier to sand now before I cut the hexagon, so I started with 120 grit and worked my way up to 220 grit. I would have gone up to 320, but I ran out of paper. You'll see with the finish there aren't any visible scratches, so it looks like 220 grit was enough. To cut the hexagons, I'm going to use this hexagon cutting sled that I made a while back. I have a separate video for this that you can check out too. The way it works is that I first remove this stop so I can fit the blank and make the first cut. It helps to first cut a template that you can use to position the blank in order to minimize wastage. After making the first cut, I can put the stop back into place and clamp it down. Then it's just a matter of nesting it up against the stops and cutting one side at a time, rotating the piece as you go. I took my time to always make sure the piece was properly seated with no gaps before making each cut. Otherwise, it's easy to throw your hexagon out of whack. Once the first hexagon is done, grab the offcut and repeat the same process, moving the piece around in a clockwise direction as you go. I did the same for the other blanks I had made, making the first cut with the backstop removed, and then putting it back into position for the remaining cuts. If you're interested in building this jig, I have a video that you can watch by clicking the link in the top right corner, and I'll also leave a link in the description below. As I mentioned before, I didn't make my blanks long enough, so on the last hexagon, I ended up short, as you can see. So I guess someone is getting a set of three coasters this year. Oh well. Once all the coasters were cut, I sanded all the edges and then cleaned off the sawdust using denatured alcohol. It evaporates really fast, so you can almost immediately apply finish afterwards, and it also gives you a nice preview of what they're going to look like. As a finish, I'm using Osmo Pollux Oil. It's a hard wax oil mix that's water resistant, and I like how it gives the wood a really deep, rich look while making the epoxy nice and shiny. Hey, I hope you liked this epoxy experiment, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell too. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.